That's it. So welcome everyone. And uh, on this special uh, session, a special webinar um, presented to you by the Wise Move Society and Move Into the Future. My name is Ingun Boll. I'm the founder of Move Into the Future. And I'm here today with my co-host, Dr. Tatiana Rosen, and our guest for today, Judy Martini. Uh, three weeks after the launch of the Wise Move Society, we are getting up to speed and welcoming members from all over the world. Men and women who want to contribute to create the future and love to be part of a community of like-minded people doing so. We all have in common that we are aware that our growing older population will come with new challenges, but we want to be part of the solution. We want to show the world that we of the 50 plus generation are not on our way out, but part of the future. So before we share more about the Wise Moon Society, I would like to give my co-host Tatiana Rosen and our guest Judy Martini the opportunity to introduce themselves. So let's start with Tatiana. Tatiana, the floor is yours. Hi, hello, Ingham. So I'm um, Tatiana Rosen. I'm a coaching psychologist. I've been other versions of psychologists as well in the past. And I'm also an academic and researcher. And my area of research is work in midlife and beyond. So, um, yes, so I'll give the floor to Judy. I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you for joining us today. On. There, am I, am I unmuted now? Yeah. Hi, I'm Judy Martini, and I'm so happy to be here and part of this Wise Move Society. And I'm a self-empowerment intuitive teacher and author, and I help empower people and help them change their perspective to something that is more healthy for them to move forward in life. And I'm so happy to be part of a society that, that absolutely is like-minded as well. Good, well, we were happy to have you on board, uh, Judy, and uh, you actually uh, uh, were the first, mm -hmm. even during our no. yes. <laughs> You already typed in, uh, I registered to be a member. So you were actually the first real member of our uh, society. So it's good to have you here. And we'll hurry, hear more about your story uh, right now. So I already see Renee uh, coming in and welcome Renee and Tabello is here. So uh, we'll give you an opportunity to introduce yourself uh, later on. Uh, but let's start with uh, Tachana because you really, it's, you know, it's your area of research, this, this population, this 50 plus generation, midlife and up. And um, can you just give us, you know, paint that picture of what is going on and what is so special about this generation? Uh, there's a lot going on in, in it's, it's as you might imagine, there's a huge diversity of people in this age group. There's a huge amount of interest. But there are a couple of trends happening, especially since the pandemic and the whole working from home and the digital revolution that are happening, which we're finding that there are two approaches to the 50 plus. Either people are taking an approach of um, aging, bring fragility, vulnerability, and therefore we need to protect people of a certain age group. And the other view is actually we should not single out people. People are different. They have different levels of energy. They want to do different things. And if we treat everyone as one block, we might be missing out the opportunity to actually make the most of people's abilities, skills and interests um, in the world out there. So even this morning, I was part of a big conference um, based here in Europe, but talking about global issues of aging and pretty much looking on how, how many opportunities we can see in front of us, but if we don't do anything, if we just leave things be the way they are now, this is gonna pass us by and we're gonna miss the chance to tip the scale and, and, and make that age group really count. Mm -hmm. Mm. And we actually don't, we, 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 we don't have the, um, well, 
it's it's even not possible to not act right now because this this age group is growing and it's growing fast but they come with special challenges and i like it that you see there's new opportunities also uh, uh, involved but we really have to act now before it's too late and we're really walking into this this almost a trap of that we come in this position of this this moment that we say oh now we see what is happening and then it's too late it's true i think the time is now and not only as a society and on the social level we all need to act it's all in our interest to act it's good for us it's good for our children for our grandchildren it just makes a better place uh, across the board um, mm -hmm. but we do need to act now for ourselves as well because there will be no invitation for us to do something for ourselves we, we either do it or don't do it and actually it's pretty established that sometimes and probably Judy will be able to talk to us about that as well um, it, sometimes the biggest barriers are within us rather than outside we are the ones that set the boundaries that say oh maybe i'm too old for this maybe i should be giving space to someone younger and 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 the science says that all these are misconceptions someone of an older age group having a job doesn't take away the job of someone younger that's just no relationship there and there's no such thing as being too old to learn or too old to engage in a new venture or start a business. There's no, no data that shows us that. But we do still have those beliefs that we tend to take with us and, and, and guide our behaviors based on those beliefs. And, and I think that's time to change that as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Tatiana. And we'll come back to, uh, to uh, more um pretty soon, but Judy, um, I would love to hear your story, you know, your background, your story, and uh, you know, you are absolutely part of this age group, but uh, there has been quite a journey there. Oh yeah, do we have 10 hours for my story? I, no, we don't. <laughs> I, just, I just hired um, a copywriter to, I'm starting my book, and I sent her two pages of really dramatic and trauma, traumatic things that's happened in my life. And I said, where do we start? And she goes, well, are we writing volumes here like a series? But um, I've come from a background of much trauma, drama, stress, and lived my whole life in fight or flight and thought that worrying was a badge of honor, you know, that I had to worry. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't till in my thirties after three husbands and five kids later in abusive relationships and raising them all my own and trying to be an entrepreneur that I, that I came into myself, so to speak, that I woke up and said, there has to be something more to this life, right? And, and, and it all boils down to like what Tatiana said is about a belief system you hold within you about who you are and why you're supposed to be here. And the three things I teach clients is remember who you are at core level, recognize your purpose and your passion and your guess of why you're here and then the third is connect to a higher power your universal source god angels whatever you want to call them and there's your perfect formula for life and part of me joining this wise movement society was because i saw an opportunity here to connect with people my own age and i saw that there was an inspirational and motivational factor to this and seniors have always been, uh, let's just say, a passion of mine. I remember working with seniors in my early 20s. And I even started a senior show on television called The Wisdom Years because I felt, and I still feel, so here's what happens typically as, as, as a human. So when we're a young person, we get put in a cement box, whether it's school or daycare. And then as a person of age, we go out and we put ourselves in a box to work at a job. And then as we age and get older, we put them, parents, grandparents, in another box in a nursing home retirement center. So we're all segregated and separated. And what happens to the older people is they're forgotten about because they are forgotten about. They're put in a place where this is their home now. And they have so many skills to be able to offer us so much more wisdom. I mean, when you look in indigenous societies, where do the people go for wisdom? To their elders, 
The elders are revered and respected because they hold the wisdom and the skills and the knowledge that we need. So it's been a passion of mine to work with seniors over the years. And part of me doing the television show um, and hosting, it was to bring back seniors into the community through various ways, means, and, and methods. So when this, this group came up, this, this new movement came from about over 50, I went, I need to be part of that. I need to be part because I also had to innovate my business at, um, I'm 64, so last year I lost it all again. I've lost everything so many times in my life, right down to nothing. And I've had to innovate my business at 64, knowing that I am unemployable, that I don't believe I need to be in a job, that I've got skills, talents that I can offer the world. And I do with my clients. So part of being this with this society is another way and an outlet for me to offer services and to connect with like-minded people. And I think as women, we're starting to come into our own much more than we ever have, where the new, the 50 is the new 40, right? So we're starting to see that we're not going to be put in a cement box as we age at 65 to say retire. And I think men, even though we have very few men at the moment coming in, I think the men are starting to tap into their, what you call a feminine side <laughs> and start to see that, that they don't have to belong into that, that group that society has put them in. So again, I think, you know, with the belief systems and the way society has set this up, it's all for failure. You know, all of the segregated cement boxes we get put in and we never, never really get to live our true life and our passions. So being part of this allows me to share, to care and to connect. So I'm extremely happy to be here. Mm -hmm. And that's just a snippet of my story. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Judy. Yes, and I know you've been sharing uh, bits and pieces over the past couple of weeks and, uh, uh, you know, that is so important. And your vision on you, you are the one that has to decide to change. And, uh, and Renee, and I see that uh, she already mentioned also in the chat, if you believe in abundance, there is enough opportunities for everyone. Uh, if, you, if you believe and you can really tap into the right things, then there is opportunity for everyone. But I also believe, and I would love to hear your perspective on that, is that not everyone in that age group feels like, um, well, they do want change, but they do not want to change. Well, it's because they've been disempowered. Mm -hmm. And exactly why I teach self-empowerment through new perspective and understanding that your belief system isn't your own. You know, as a child, you're, as, when you see young children and you see them running and jumping and playing and dancing and singing, they never want to sleep because they're just loving life until the moment that young child is told, no, don't do that. You're a bad person. You can't sing. You're fat. Don't play with that truck. You play with this do this, do that. And then they get into the school system and they're told you're not smart enough in this subject. And then the society and the media tells them you're not skinny enough. You don't have big enough, right? And, and, and you have to wear this color. And then religion tells them another thing. And then the government tells them another thing. So we are constantly being programmed, if you want to call it, and disempowered. So that's why a lot of them just go, whatever. I'll just obey. I'll follow along. Mm -hmm. I've lived my life as best as I can. I don't have anything much to offer. So it's when you help them remember that they do have much more to offer, when you empower them, that's when the change comes. And that's what I love to do is help people remember who they are, that they're more than the programming and the brainwashing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of them keep living in the past. Yeah. And I was just talking because we already have a lot going on on the in the Wise Move Society on the platform, and we have these uh, weekly sessions and and conversations. Uh, and it was uh, uh, this afternoon. It was really great. You know, one of our sixty-four year olds was just hired. She got a new job after two and a half years. You know, she was uh, uh, didn't give up, but really, you know, was focused on what she did want out of life and she got that job that she wanted so that was really great but um we were talking also she's in hr so it, it is that that perspective and i love to hear on renee also what what she feels about it if you talk about people about you know what they want in life 
they actually talk about how good they have been in the past. Yeah. You know, and that is also when they show you, when they want a job, for instance, they show you the resume and it's always about what they have done, how good they have been, but it doesn't say anything about what they want in the future and what steps they will be able to take to really move into the, a new role in society. And then, right. especially at this age, it yeah. will be an, a, absolutely a new role in an organization or a new role in, you know, in, in setting up a, a new business or whatever. But it's, it's very much more, more talking about what has happened in the past. Well, that's most of our day. Like, I'll just say 98% of our day is either in the past about what I should have done, could have done, wished I would have done, had, I shouldn't have done that because then that wouldn't have happened. Or the future, what if that happens? And what if that doesn't work? And I, I don't know if I can do that. So we're either in the past or the future. We're never in the now moment where all your power resides because right now determines your future, which your future never arrives because it's always the next now. But we're not taught that everything resides in the now if we let go of the past and realize there is no future because we're right here right now creating the next moment mm -hmm. and we're not taught that so we get stuck yeah no we're stuck and and this is this is where people this is why we see so much chaos is because we're stuck in the past and the future and don't know what power we have in the now to move forward and make a new decision mm -hmm. yeah thank you thank you judy uh tachana uh we want to change but we do not want to change we need a transition, but is a transition an option? If that is it possible, if you are struggling on your own, it's always possible. Inga, let's start with that. I love what Juju was say about just being stuck in the past or future and 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 missing out what's happening now, and and I think this is very serious. This is a very important thing to highlight because we hear a lot about mindfulness and mindfulness is great, but not always what we hear is the most fundamental aspect of mindfulness is that life is always present. Our past is the memory of the memory of the memory which means is your present and your future is your present as well because you're looking through the eyes you have right now. So that, that, that's it. We don't realize how much we are in the present but not engaging with it. Mm -hmm. So when we engage with it, the whole perspective of changing for the future. So I'll, I'll give a few examples of things I hear. Oh, what's the point? I'm already in this age. Why would I change for the future? But you're not going to change for the future. You're going to change now. It's today. It's to make today an interesting day, an interesting endeavor. And, and tomorrow will be tomorrow's interesting endeavor. And, and because we're engaging with life, then opportunities emerge from that. Is, is having that expectation that gives that sense of dread and heaviness that prevents people from engaging with life as it is. And, 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 and Judy, I love the cement boxes. Yes, is not having the obligation to fit a mold is <laughs> really fantastic and liberating. And I think that that is a change of mindset. It's a small shift that makes a difference to, to pursue change. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Can I add something? Yes, Renee. Or add some perspective? Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I, I wanted to ask you, please, Renee, introduce yourself shortly. And, and yes, of course, we are here. <laughs> okay, so I think most of you know me, but I'm Renee, Renee van der Burg. I'm Dutch, and I've had a, a pretty long career uh, up till a few years ago in corporate high tech companies in human resources. And uh, after my last assignment abroad, I returned to the Netherlands, took some time out and uh, not working in corporate anymore. So rethinking my next phase of life and uh, uh, doing coaching work and also doing a few of the uh, uh, volunteer works uh, like working with uh, organizations that uh, empower women. And so what I wanted to add actually is your question on, we want to change, but do we really want change? And 
I think one of the, from a corporate, more corporate perspective, and I'm not an entrepreneur and I, I, my life has been corporate. From that perspective, I still remember quite vividly until late in my career, like, like even in after 2000, 2010, when people would sort of start getting ready for their retirement, we would prep them or we would have a, an outside training to prep them as if it's sort of a distinguished um, separation between this working life in corporate and what's happened next. And then, you know, these beautiful visions of beaches and free time and, and the people were not ready for that because when you've lived in this, this, this cycle for a lot of years in your life, then you just don't want to only enjoy because you maybe want to enjoy five weeks or six weeks, but you know, you still got your energy. So I think change, want to change and uh, dare to change is also breaking out of, from corporate experience, breaking out of that mold of, this is how things are. You have your corporate life, then you go retire, and then you know you either go in boards or it's yeah. I mean, I think that is sort of that's another pattern that I think we've been used to or raised with when we work in organizations, and and that is a at least that's also a personal discovery that I made. You don't want to retire. I'm now 63, but I, I don't want to retire. I didn't want to retire when I was 60 or 59. Don't want to retire most probably when I was 67. I don't know. I just want to be, you know, still active and doing impactful things. But I, so just to bring in that perspective of how you are sort of raised in, in organizations, that's again, sort of boxing in. This is the pattern, how it works. And I, yeah, I think that's another thing that, or, or boundary or that you have to actively work on when you're in it, you know, to feel that change and to make the change happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I want to say something about the word retire. This is another one of the brainwashing or conditioning yes, exactly. that we need to retire from what we're doing. And yeah. why would I retire from something I love to do? Yeah. You know, this is where I say, if you're living your passions, your talents, the reason why you were here on this planet. I mean, the reason why I was here on the planet back 40 years ago was to raise kids on my own. It, that, yeah, that was one of the main reasons, but it, we change and we evolve. And there's different passions and reasons why we're here on the planet. And none of them is to retire from anything, except if we don't like it, but we're not taught that. And then when, when we're taught, as you said, to retire, we have a mindset that says, I'm done. I'm supposed to not do anything anymore, but enjoy grandchildren, yeah. you know, <laughs> and to play golf if you play golf. And, and so that creates a whole mindset of abandonment and not being needed and wanted anymore. And there's no validation for the seniors anymore because they're working years. Society says that's where you're validated and what you do is your job, you know, and you're validated more if you're a president of a company than you are as an, you know, an employee. So your validation sort of stops when you, when you say, well, I have to retire now and just do life. And so that's a whole conception. And I think we're being, you know, as Tatiana said, this is crucial. It, this is how society thinks. So how do we move them from that into I'm a valuable, wanted and validated human being? And I think this is part of what, you know, the thought leaders here are, are thinking that we need to do. Mm -hmm. So the word retire, it's like, I think that's, it's not funny, but that's, you hear it all the time. I can't wait to retire to do the things I want to do and have more time to do the things I want to do. Actually, I, uh, there's this lady from South Africa, Linda Smith, who joins us uh, regularly, and she has a company uh, that she wanted to change that word retire, and she changed it into refire. But she said, you have no idea how many people read retire you know we're so programmed on this word retire that they don't even read that it is refire so it's uh, pretty uh, uh, strange well um there's bonnie here um, uh, online on facebook and she says now is the time to live to live as we wish and to find our true spirit 
I love who I am at my age today. And Bonnie uh, Fascio is absolutely someone who is uh, an example for us of, uh, you know, even starting new ventures. Uh, I think around 70 <laughs> and uh, really making it successful as well and uh, really sticking to it. You know, it's, it's, and she is not ready yet. You know, there's uh, still a lot of things coming, co going to be there because this, there's this mindset of, you know, I'm not going to sit at home and just waiting for things to happen. I'm going to make it happen. There's still so much to do. And that is what you really want to see in, in, uh, uh, in people. Uh, Pam, I would like to, uh, to invite you. You are here. Um, please introduce yourself shortly and I'd love to hear your perspective. You're, you, you have a different background, so uh, you're also in this age group, so let's hear what you think. Well, thanks, Ingrid. Yeah, this is a very interesting discussion. Yeah, my name is Pam Thompson. I, I live on the west coast of Canada in Victoria. And I'm someone who's done many things in my life, as, as many of you have. I started my first business in the early 90s and have had four since then, moving from consulting to coaching to now consulting and coaching. And what I've noticed, I actually am 68, going to be 69 soon. Um, and I can't believe it. And I am certainly not ready to retire. <laughs> I don't think I ever will be. I, uh, I feel like I am tapping into some, you know, gifts I've had in the past. And when I review my life, it's really hard. Look, what was Judy and others are saying, I think Tatiana, the business about holding on to your past. It's very interesting when you've done many things to say, well, this is who I am. You know, I, I, I've worked, I've managed big international development projects. I'm a project manager. I have facilitated multi-sectoral, whatever it is. I've written books like so for me right now it's so what do I choose because I feel like I don't want to disperse my energies so it's really been a time for me to um, grapple with how do I create balance in my life and still have time for my four grandkids ages three to now six and um, feel fulfilled and also spend time with my friends and and my partner and how do I do that in a way that I didn't do when I was younger and I was constantly driving and striving? So for many of us who have been very achievement oriented, which I would count in and probably many here, I don't know you all, but I know some of you, uh, when, when we're younger, we're always setting goals and driving for them. And I feel like the last few years I'm really, you know, more grounded and I've done a lot of personal growth work. work. And my feeling is that you know, part of what's really important is to really connect, like Judy said, with our gifts and our talents and really decide what we want to do. And the business about letting go of the past. I don't know how many of you are familiar with William Bridges' work, um, an organizational theorist. Sadly, he's passed, but he's done a lot of work on life transitions and organizational development. And one of the things he, he talked about is the difference between a life change and a transition and he said a change is something external and situational to us, like, you know, um, getting it like separate, getting separated to divorce and the divorce papers, for example, or getting a pink slip or retiring. It's very external. However, the transition is the internal psychological work that we do to adjust to that new external reality. And what happens with many people in, in their lives is they, they, make the life change, but they don't do the internal work. So I think part of what's really important for us and perhaps wise move in this in our own in, in this age group and moving above 50 and beyond is to really review those transitions and say, have I really done that work to reorient myself to the new reality? And part of that process includes letting go of status. Going back to what Judy said about validation and value, I believe for me that my value, it was, I've been socialized to believe my value is related to me making money. And so even though I do volunteer work, I'm not really valued unless I'm making money. And so I think, you know, I'm, I'm still having a bit of challenge of letting go of that. I still have that in me, I know. And um, maybe that's not bad. Maybe I'm meant to start looking at how in my business can I re- 
reignite parts of it, right? Because I've done a lot of volunteer work and I continue to do that. Um, and the other piece is um, then you envision that new life. So you let go, you envision that new life or relationship, and then you take action toward it. So I see from the Wise Move Society and what you're doing, um, Ingrid, it's very valuable because you're supporting people to stay where they are, to, to review their past and say, you know, what, what do I need to let go of, whether it's status, whether that's value related to making money, whether that I am the HR person like Renee, I am a global person, you know, who travels around the world and does this and that. No, that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm still valuable. And so the mindset shift and the work that we need to do to get to the place of feeling comfortable with who we are, I think is part of this process. And it requires support often from coaches or, you know, circles. I'm part of a women's circle. I have been for a couple of years and that's very powerful too. So yeah, I, I, I applaud you, Ingen, for stepping up and starting this, this group because there is a need to be, for people to be supported and for us to learn from one another. And I'm constantly learning and growing and I feel like that's how a lot of people think if they've had productive lives and felt that they've made a difference and we want to keep making a difference. However, it's in different ways, you know, and so there's a lot to be done in terms of working with ourselves and together to gain clarity on who do we want to be in our next phase. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking about that more and more every day because I'm stepping into being an author and writing more. And how do I stay connected? Because I love to connect and yet I'm a very creative person. So, you know, I'm working on my first novel. I've written nonfiction before, but I, this is my first novel. I'm quite excited about the opportunities. So anyway, I'll stop now because I can keep going on. Thank you, know, you for the you, to, you can talk for hours. So that is <laughs> yeah. and the, but the thing is, and we talk about that a lot, you know, the value, the meaning, and that we really bring something into the world and that it is more important. But I'm not really a butt person, but but say and and and. <laughs> But, you know, if I was reading this article a couple of days ago, and that was especially in the United States, and I think it is, it's a, well, a similar situation in, in many, many countries. Only 17% of the people in their 50s think they can retire at 65. This means that 83% feels or knows that they do not have enough retirement money, funds to really retire. So yes, I love it, volunteer work. I love it when you know we, we're talking about value and we're talking about meaning and things like that, but people really need to earn money. They were talking about a whole generation, a whole group of people in the United States buying campers. There's websites there that they can look into and see where seasonal work. So you're in your 70s and you're driving your camper, your van to the next spot because you need to earn money. That is the situation right now. So that is something also that for, for the Wise Moon Society is something if you look at um, what do we want to get out of it is also this opportunity in whatever way for them to get that financial stability in their retirement years, whatever they start, yeah. Tatjana, you must be sitting on the, you know, like, come on, <laughs> I want to say something. <laughs> No, that's a very, very interesting um, thing that you shared with us, Ingen. And I think that is very important, the financial side of leaving the workforce. Let's, let's park the retired word there. Let's say exiting the workforce. And, um, and the two things that are very prominent, first is not having enough funds to go because you know, we know that investments don't give as much money. And if you have 
if you have uh, breaks in employment in your life, you don't accumulate as much money. And, and a lot of people experience that in, in different stages, notably 2008 of the financial crisis, many people got unemployed. And then even if they've gone back to employment, sometimes there's no time to recover that, that missed uh, time. The other aspect of that is a lot of people reaching their 50s, not in very good health. So even though financially they're not in a position to retire, they cannot really put themselves just to any work because physically we can't cope. So I think these two things, which sounds two very negative aspects, they are very important to be talked about because at this stage in life, in, 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 in our 50s and and actually, at any stage, medicine says that if you start looking after yourself, you can revert a number of things. If not, stall the progression of something that is already starting within you. And, and, and is an important area to be aware of. And, and with that goes into work planning. What can you work, what your work can be that is not going to make your health deteriorate? Mm -hmm. alone sometimes it's very difficult to find what the ideas what can can I do if I uh, I'm thinking about Rene what you mentioned on being a company for many years if it, that's all you've done it's like being asleep you know I, I'll say being asleep let me just give it a bit of context this week I learned I, I was learning about the science of sleep and that we don't sleep enough as a society. Mm -hmm. And this person, the scientist said, but when you wake up, you sometimes won't wake up refreshed straight away because your brain will take some time to adjust from sleep mode into waking up mode. So we will take about half an hour and so for you to actually feel refreshed. So it's okay, if it's time for you to get up, get up because your brain will pick up. And, and sleep is not in a state of being asleep but if you move from one mode to another mode after a continuous amount of time you do need a bit of time to reorientate yourself and, mm -hmm. and, and to pick up a different speed and I think that's the same with career transitions health transitions all these changes that we feel that we need to do it sometimes takes a bit of time to 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 feel comfortable in to organize our lives differently. But doesn't mean that's not necessary to do so. We need to do so because we are in flux. We are in a state of change and we need to be watching out for the, the scenarios that cannot be as, the, the negative scenarios that might happen in front of us. And if we are aware of that, then we can cut, I would say, cut the fat, cut the things that are actually don't really matter to us and focus on the ones that actually are the important things in our lives. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Tatiana. Um, I want to move back to, to Judy and um, because, well, you've really participated also in what is going on at the Wise Move Society on the platform. And of course, we're in this whole process, only three weeks, you know, and getting people on board and, you know, and then it's a bigger group and a smaller group. But the two of the things that we do every week is on Tuesday, we have a session on um, uh, that we really want people to share uh, what they feel are the new challenges that we're facing and that we need to find solutions on. And uh, on Friday afternoon, we have a World Cafe where we really want to dive deeper into those, uh, those issues. Because in the end, of course, we are working towards that action. We want to work towards this, this solution and not only talk, but really start creating and innovating. And there was this one afternoon, Judy, that we said, okay, let's what are the three most important things that you feel are our biggest challenges right now and that we need to start creating on, need to start working on? 
and then you started with three and it was like the list became longer and longer and longer until I had to turn the page and start writing on the next. So you really feel, and that is very interesting because that is really, as a wise move society, we want to work on these challenges and we want to really start that, that creation process and, and starting those new opportunities. So, um, if you look at that process, you know, and, and what, what we have been doing so far, and of course, it's, it's still a couple of weeks, but um, there's a lot that we have to do. There's a lot of challenges that we have to work on. Well, I think the biggest challenge that we work on is ourselves mm -hmm. <laughs> because of the belief systems that have been ingrained or programmed into us about who we are and how we show up in society and how we show up for ourselves in relationships and how we show up as an individual. And as I say, the three tenets that I help clients do is remember who you are at core level. Who are you beyond this earth suit? You know, because the earth suit's only borrowed for a short period of time. Who are you? And then of course, why are you here? What, what are you supposed to be doing now? Where are you being led to go right now as the world changes, as you evolve and you change? And then of course, who are you, voice are you listening to during the day? Are you listening to TV programming? Are you listening to your old parents' voices? You know, what your mother said? Or, or are you listening to old belief systems within yourself about who you are? Or are you listening to a higher self? that self that's connected to that omnipresent source energy all the time, that your intuition that's always guiding you in the right direction. And when you understand that there's spiritual laws on this planet, law of gravity is one of them, and I don't teach that one because we learned that one when we were a child. <laughs> but some of the wisest masters of this world have taught about that there's a law of attraction, so to speak, that thoughts become things, birds of a feather fly together things like that, that we have just sort of passed over, that I really don't have control of that. Isn't that a coincidence? Which there is no coincidences because everything's synchronistic. And so, I mean, when I, I can delve off into this so much more because when we understand it fully, we then become free. We then become like Tatiana says, is beyond the mindfulness about being in the moment where all your power is to make new decisions. But first you have to understand why you've made the decisions you've made, why you're in the circumstance you're in, why are you unhappy? I'll never forget years ago, Oprah did a show. So this has to be at least 15, 20 years ago. And she had a whole panel of women on there, all different makes and types of women that you can imagine in all different genres and, and from around the world. And she says, I want every one of you to guess which of these women are happy. And so she gave the woman 10 minutes each to speak about their life. And so you'd have the woman who spoke about her two perfect kids and her perfect car and her perfect husband and her house was gorgeous and she has a maid. And then you talked about the woman who was in corporate. Then you talked, then the woman talked if she served food in a restaurant and she had a boyfriend and she had a life. So every woman had a certain scenario. And we were to guess which of those women were happy. Every single person in the audience got it wrong mm -hmm. because none of them were happy. They were doing what they were told they need to do to show up in this lifetime. None of them were living their passions. Every single one of them got married and had kids because they were supposed to. And nobody knew themselves. Like you said, Ingham, and, you know, and this is why I jumped in is, who are you? Why are we here? What, what, are, what has made you the person you are? And do you not think you can change that? That's mm -hmm. the biggest obstacle is we think we can't change. You know, the old people say, well, you can't teach a dog new tricks, right? And then we turn it around and say, you can. But <laughs> when we understand that we're more than what we have been, that's when the powerful change happens. And I think, you know, you said there's a lot of work to do, but there's a lot of inner work to do before the outer shows. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I've always been involved in community, whether it's chairman of the boards for or women's shelters or homeless people, I've always had a part in community because we are community because we're all one. Mm -hmm. This is a community here. So when we partake in that and don't single ourselves out as being separate, and I, I wrote an article about the biggest lie is that we're separate. 
-hmm. And there goes the boxes again. We're separate from our kids because they're in a cement box. We're separate from our, our, anybody else because we're at work in a cement box. We're separate from our parents because they're in a cement box in the retirement home. The biggest lie is that we're separate, especially from the creator or the universe, whatever you want to call it. So we've lost our power. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, with moving forward, if we remember that we can be empowered, that's when the change starts happening automatically on the outside. So we don't work on the projects on the outside before we change within. And that's where the biggest change comes from. And then everything else just automatically falls into place. Yeah. That's my thought on that, Ingham. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and we've been talking about this uh, already a lot. And uh, uh, this is the, the the change from within. And this is absolutely something that we are going to work on on the platform because otherwise it's not going to happen. Uh, and what you mentioned with the old dog and new tricks, uh, this afternoon in the session, we've been talking about neuroscience. And neuroscience is absolutely something that has proven that uh, of course, it, it is about who you are and what you feel and, 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 you know, and that is very important to discover who you are. The answer lies within, that is what uh, uh, Mami Von uh, from South Africa always uh, mentions. Um, but it's actually proven that your brain is able up to a, you know, a very old age to change, to really, uh, so it's, it's, Yes, that old dog is able to learn new tricks. So we are going to work on that as well. So uh, uh, we'll bring on a lot of uh, experts also to, uh, to talk on, on all kinds of different subjects and to really also to, to give people more, well, you know, to, to uh, give them more knowledge about what is going on in this new world and, and, and how they are able to... Uh, uh, to to deal with it with confidence, but also what for them is is very important, especially this older generation to um, you to to work from that seniority, from that you know that that part of that they come with that wisdom, that that experience in life that they've really lived, and that is so important to be able to uh, uh, to take that next step and to to have that new role in society. Tatiana, I see you already. Yes, I, I, I have to say that the, the collective aspect, I say that every week, but there you are, is my mantra. Connecting with people is at the heart of making positive changes. Um, there's a number of uh, uh, risks that you're mitigating by meeting other people and getting together. Is having a bit of an insight how to set up a business so you don't end up losing the money you have that you're investing or how to try out a, a new role based on, on, on how others tried as well. So there's a bit of a shortcut there on, 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 of ideas. And it doesn't mean that by getting together for the people, you do like others do. It's not how the creative process works. It's just by listening to different ideas, you can come to your own ideas but you can get warned and advice against the bad ideas as well because others done it or others seen it. And so that this is, there's an advantage to that. I think one of the things that are interesting is that as we get older, we become very individualized, very unique in who we are. We, we all have different experiences. So it is easier to say, that five-year-olds are, are sort of fairly similar, even though I disagree with that. But then over 50s, bundling everyone into one group, it's, it's, it's naive to say the least. We all have enough life experience to make us different from one another. But only by getting together with different people from different countries, different backgrounds, you can find ideas that resonate with you. And sometimes, again, this is something I often say that it's not within your immediate group of people that you find these ideas. And sometimes you don't want to explore these ideas with your family or your close friends because you know how they're going to respond. You already can predict that puts you off. 
So going to a, a completely different community gives you the chance to actually be bold and, and, and put an idea out there to see how it's going to land with others that you wouldn't do otherwise because you don't have that psychological safety that, to do so. So it's, it's, it's an interesting, I, I think it's a, it's a, a whole wonderful world in front of us now that we all more connected with, with the world and the wise move society is a pretty good example of that mm -hmm. i just wanted to say this was the best the best pitch we could do for people to invite them onto the platform because you know that was amazing this is what it's all about and uh, uh that was thank you tatiana <laughs> i'm going to cut and paste it and <laughs> very great well we have a couple of minutes left 10 minutes so um from here renee and and pam i really would like to hear because you're listening in and and you shared your perspective please uh, renee well i just uh, i was sparked by tatiana with the community and inspiration and support that we uh, we get from that from some sort sort of it's at the same time it's like-minded people in a way and at the same time but or not but and they're also we're also so different so at the same time i believe that we always have more in common than that makes us different so uh, this community i think is important um there's this idea that i got from one of our teachers in in the program that we are doing with uh, with female wave change by the way and she spoke about you'll have it's always important to have more friends. Of course, that was in the context of women empowerment. So she was talking about women friends, but for me, that concept really uh, hit home because you know you have this friend that is maybe helping you like more like a mentor or a sponsor. So helping you maybe in career or professional um, uh, decisions. You have this friend where you can always call upon or or you know ring the bell like okay i'm in need for you know uh, renting or or and there's this friend you go maybe to concert with or you do sports with so and and this community is another community that gives i think us a, a place to reflect think and then hopefully also act so I, I started thinking about community and you know net, the importance of network, and that it this definitely also fits in um, in your support system, and that your support system uh, really gets even maybe more important once you grow older. So happy to be here. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, Pam. Mm. Thank you. Yes, there's many directions to go here. <laughs> to build on what Renee and also Tatiana said, um, the business about um, having a community to connect with outside of your normal community, I think, I think that's very real because people tend to perceive us in different ways. And so when people perceive you in a certain way, sometimes you feel you have an expectation that you act that way with them. Whereas uh, when you go to a new group, you can feel you can be whoever you want to be, right? And that's really your true self and you can share. And so I, I can see that that's what this community can offer to people. And something about the power in diversity and how, like I've been a facilitator for many years and worked at different levels with multiple stakeholders to bring to build consensus around things. And what I know to be true is the more diverse a group is, the richer the discussion and the more creative solutions emerge. So I feel like this Wise Move Society platform provides that opportunity for richness and diversity so people can co-create together cool projects. Maybe, you know, it's not only about the individuals themselves, um, it's also about them getting together with like-minded yet di different people with different backgrounds from different cultures to create something totally new. And, and to me, that's very, very exciting because if we stay in our communities and we relate to the people we always have related to, sometimes we don't have that creative spark. But if you connect with diverse new folks, it enables new seeds to grow and new sparks to be ignited. So I see that as the power too in, in the, the Wise Move Society. 
Okay, I think I'm going to cut and paste all these pieces as one USB to join <laughs> the Wise Moose Society. Thank you, ladies. Judy, uh, I said, oh, yeah, you're back. Um, yes, the importance of that community. Last. Oh my gosh. Yes, last words. <laughs> it is so important to have a diverse community. You know, as sitting in many um, powerful positions as chairman of the board for different organizations and actually hands-on community work, you are regarded and valued in so many different ways. And Pamela said something that was so important about perception <laughs> because family and friends perceive you a certain way. And sometimes they don't give you their, they give you a perceived um, perception, right? So that you're not valued the same because they've already perceived you as someone that can be achiever or not an achiever, or you're out of your, your, your bracket or you're in, you know, the right place. So they give you a mixed perception where strangers and different levels of diversity always give you valid truth about who you are, how you're showing up. So part of this wise move movement is about coming here and finding new ways to be part of a new community and how you can be of value in this community and how you show up for yourself is so different than anything else because this is new and there's no expectation because expectation is a huge word because these friends and family expect you to show up in a certain way and they've perceived you to show up in a certain way. So I think it's so valuable to, to know that community is your support system now more than ever before. And especially when they're a lot like-minded, like anyone that's going to join this movement is more or less generally like-minded in the fact that they, they wanna be inspired and motivated and validated and connect on a whole other level. And that's the commonality that I think is, is the winning factor because um, we're not here to make money per se. You know what I mean? This isn't a, a networking group to, to make money. It's, it's about connection in a whole new way that isn't out there in the way it is. So I think this is, this is such a wise move, <laughs> wise move society, to, to start a new way of showing up. I think it's so important. Wow. Some really valuable uh, words uh, there. So thank you all. Uh, normally I, I close the session, but uh, I'm going to invite my co-host to do so. Um, Tatiana, if you want to, to you know, for me, it's, um, I'm everly, ever so grateful for uh, your contributions because, um, you know, it is a glimpse what we give of, of what is actually going on uh, in the Wise Moon Society. But uh, you, thank you very much for, for just being here. But Tatiana, I leave it up to you to, uh, to finish off this, uh, this wonderful conversation. Thank you, Ingo, and thank you, Renee, Pamela, and Judy for joining us. It's just wonderful to to talk to you. I think that's the true spirit of what is is a conversation of like-minded yet diverse group of people. And uh, and I will just finish with one thing for everyone to think about. And I will uh, pinch that from Judy, which is no expectation. No expectation is a wonderful thing. There are wonderful, um, broad possibilities with no expectation, no expectation in a safe way. So uh, yes, keep that thought in mind. I hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the week and keep in mind it, it, in communities, you can, you know, you can be yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you all. Bye-bye.